What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Listen, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to leave a like. It really does help out the channel and all the support is greatly appreciated. Today I've got a really good match here and it's also against a very good battle. This is against Skyrander. He also posts Wi-Fi content. His link will be in the description. Make sure to check out his channel. We've definitely battled a lot in the past and he always you know, he puts up a good challenge. So also leave a comment if you have any recommendations on Pokemon you'd like to see used. I'm definitely open to testing out a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, but regardless, let's hop into the match here. He is working with quite the scary team, and he's going to lead off with none other than a piece of sushi. As I decide to toss out the Lord Stanley Cup, he actually predicts the lead here because this is unfortunate. I am ground dark, and I can't really deal with this thing. However, my team doesn't have a whole lot that wants to deal with it either. So I'm thinking thanks to my ability, I should be able to take at least one water attack from this thing and guarantee I can set up my stealth rock. However, he decides to think some nasty thoughts. My dude's looking pretty skeptical over there. It's actually hilarious how small this little thing is. It doesn't, it, it doesn't evolve. It, it, this is just how he is. Um, so I get up the Stealth Rock. He actually goes for the nasty plot, and that is quite scary. Because now I, of course, don't have anything else to switch into. And I decide to kind of just stay in here and see what happens. He goes for the muddy water. That does take care of the cup. And just absolutely bowl full of water out here. Dead as shit. So now... I did not think this baby sushi was going to be such a problem right from the get-go, but I've got a real problem on my hands here. So I decided to bring in the Teletubby. Uh, the team I'm using does kind of revolve around Psychic Surge with my Sweeper, so I want to get that up as well as being able to set up the light screen to be able to handle this thing. I basically uh, come in here to activate that because I know that I have certain mons that can outspeed this thing and take it out, but I do want to try to get that light screen because with this thing's nasty plot, that is going to be an extremely scary attacker. Um, and it's pretty damn quick as well. So he goes for the light screen. Actually, I'm able to outspeed with the Teletubby, which is amazing. My fat ass is somehow able to outspeed that thing. But I get up the light screen, still does a bunch of damage. Now I'm thinking I can switch right into the none other than the absolute fucking hammer. The Tooth Fairy, ready to just bust your teeth out and take some names. Uh, he actually ends up going for another nasty plot, I assume, expecting the switch in there. Uh, so here's where I'm thinking, okay, this is fine. I just have play rough. I click that. Unfortunately, no, I... I've mixed up my Tinkertons. This, I've, I have a couple different versions of this. This one is unfortunately Electric Terra Blast set that I got rid of Play Rough for. So that is what we're going to call Oversight number one. And uh, my trainer even looks a little distraught about it. So I have no real chance to do anything other than I guess just kind of stay in here. I'm thinking here's the plan. I go for a Swords Dance. I outspeed this thing by a few points because I'm jolly. Psych, he actually outspeeds me. Turns out plus speed nature... Tatsugiri outspeeds Adamant Tinkerton by literally one point. So that is oversight number two. And I swear to God, I've found myself in literally the worst situation against some fucking sushi. I'm getting myself Mercury Poison over here. And now at this point, I really am just going to go right for uh, the Gigaton Hammer. He actually ends up going for the Rapid Spin. So it does allow me to smash his ass with a hammer uh, with the plus two attack that is going to knock it down to its Focus Ash. Because of course, this sushi's not going to let me get away with it that easy. Um... And the rapid spin is quite annoying, and that's just mostly because uh, I do not have Stanley around anymore to get up that stealth rock. So it would have been super nice to have that around. However, at least I was able to knock this thing to one. Uh, I do unfortunately lose one of my one of my main dudes. You hate to see the hammer go down without absolutely Hulk smashing some bitches first, but uh, at least I was able to uh, knock that thing down to its sash by paying the price of getting rid of the stealth rock. So now. I can bring in something that's faster. I have a couple different options. I want to save the Grafai Eye for a little bit later, so I decide to go into the absolute greatest new Pokemon, who is quite literally just a Flamingo. His name is Flamingo, and he's also a punching... He's a, he's a boxing glove. I don't know. I'm going to go for the U-turn, expecting a switch. I know he has stuff like the Claude Sire on his team to be able to basically tank this. Uh, so if I can try to get a little bit of momentum back on my side, we can make some shit happen. Plus, uh, this is far from over, because my team still has its main kind of plan in the back and that is being able to take advantage of that psychic surge with a couple different sweepers so uh, i get the momentum here being able to bring in the indeedy against the claude sire i know that i can hit this thing pretty damn hard with a psychic uh depending on what kind of set this thing's working with plus it can't really touch me so i figured before i do that i'm gonna go right for a reflect uh, it looks great against the remaining mons on his team and having that up for a couple turns is gonna be nice so he ends up going for the stealth rock there basically allows me to get that reflect up for free and now I'm thinking either I Light Screen or I Psychic, but I do need to get some chip damage off on this Claude Sire if I want to make a sweep happen later. So, I decide to go right for the Psychic. I do get that boosted damage from the Psychic Surge. Doesn't quite do as much as I'd hoped, uh, which tells me this thing has to be specially defensive. This boy is an absolute fucking unit, and uh, he even has a Citrus Berry. So, gave this guy a little free lunch, and he's kind of back to where we started, as now he goes for the Psychic, or the, the Toxic here, sorry. So... 
Tally honestly doesn't care too much about being poisoned. I really just kind of need to conserve this thing to be able to switch in potentially one more time to get that Psychic Surge back up. As you see, the weirdness does disappear. And now I'm thinking I do have to switch. So I'm going to go into Balrog here. And I am expecting him to switch as well. So this is not only going to allow me to conserve the Indeedee to get that Psychic Surge up later, but also should give me a better matchup depending on if he wants to go into something like the Tinkerton or whatever against the Balrog here. So I bring in the Choice Scarf Flamigo, who honestly catches people off guard here. He does end up switching, wants to conserve Marvin, and he brings in the Iron Tread. So this actually gives me a great matchup. Futuristic-ass Donphan comes in with his weird... I don't know what the hell that thing's got going on. It design, design's honestly kind of growing on me compared to... I mean, I think I like the prehistoric version better, but I don't know. Iron Treads comes in. This gives me a solid matchup. I will outspeed with the Scarf. I go ahead and beat his ass up, and that is going to knock that thing out. So you love to see the Flamigo taking names out here. Honestly, his skinny-ass legs, you wouldn't think this thing would be able to do much. But he may be a twig, but he can punch you somehow with his uh, fucking wings. I don't know. But now he gets a free switch into whatever he would like. He decides to go into the... Basically, the Zapdos version 2. We got uh, Kilowattro out here. I'm expecting this thing to probably go for a Tailwind. Looking at his team, it seems like stuff like Tinkerton uh, can really benefit from a Tailwind. So I'm quite worried about that. However, I'm just going to go right into Telly. I know that I can likely take an attack here and potentially get up another screen before I die while also setting up the Psychic Surge. Again, I say I need this battlefield to be purple. Spilled some grape drink all over this shit and it's staying now. <laughs> so it'll be around for 8 turns. I do have the Terrain Extender. Uh, so that's pretty nice. He actually ends up going for the Volt Switch there, expecting the Switch get a little bit of momentum as he brings back in the Sushi. I would love to see this damn thing dead, um, but it's looking like Ndidi's time has kind of wore off here. As the Reflect goes away, I can now just basically, um, I either a Healing Wish or just set up another screen. Healing Wish at this point serves no purpose, so I decide to go for the Light Screen. Looking at the remainder of his team, Special Defense is going to help me out here, and uh, he is going to finish me off with the Dragon Pulse. So Ndidi did what it needed to do. I have the Psychic train up for long enough to be able to try to make some shit happen, and it is finally time. I now get a free switch, and I decide to bring in E.T. himself. And uh, the Grafii, this is how this works. This thing has the Unburden ability, meaning when I use up my item, my speed is doubled. So I come in, there's purple on the ground, and this is going to activate my Psychic Seed. So, that's not only going to boost my special defense, but also activate my Unburden ability. And now I'm faster than everything he has. I got plus one special defense, plus a light screen. And it is time to start Swords Dancing. I know behind the light screen, this thing cannot really touch me. And I can get as many Swords Dances pretty much as I would like. Uh, because after about one or two Swords Dances, I should be able to knock out pretty much everything and outspeed. So it's looking like Refai is about to make it happen here. I go for two Swords Dances just to play it safe against things like the Clodsire here. Uh, as I know, this thing can't really do much with his Dragon Pulses. So uh, I do take that pretty nice. Now it's about time to start sending some hoes to the Shadow Realm. He's going to tell him to ET phone home back to the dead. And I go right for the knockoff here, which is going to take care of it. So one is down, and I'm feeling like there's pretty much nothing that can stop this thing. There's no priority he can use because of the Psychic Surge, and it is going down. So he brings in the Serral Edge, and I'm thinking, okay, I just go right for a knockoff here. Two Swords Dance is going to take care of it. Unfortunately for me, he has another Focus Sash. That is literally the only possible thing that could have stopped this ET sweep. I swear to God, that was completely took me off guard because I saw the Focus Sash on the Tatsugiri already, and the double sash has got my ass again. I was like, there is no way. So that's why that rapid spin in the beginning, getting rid of that, that Stealth Rock, really ruined this entire match for me. So I swear, when people bring two Focus Sash Mons, I never expect the second one, and it always messes me up. So... Quite unfortunate for me that Grafia wasn't quite able to do what it was going to, but as you can tell, it had the potential. It could have easily swept the entire team if there wasn't two sashes. So, my best option is to bring back in the Flamigo. I am scarfed, however, this thing did get its uh, weak armor activated, so it is going to be faster. And now I just kind of have to hope that I can uh, I can survive an attack. Goes for the Bitter Blade. I am able to live it with 23 HP, which is absolutely insane. And this is why I'm telling you, people are sleeping on the Flamigo. This thing is an absolute beast. <laughs> Um, unfortunately for me, I do go for the Brave Bird to knock it out, so I'm not able to conserve uh, the Flamingo, even though if I had switched, I couldn't come back into Stealth Rock. However, it would be nice to at least still have another attack on something. So, uh, down I go, but I thought I was going to lose to that, uh, that Sword Boy anyway. So, it's looking like there's a chance, and when Crimson is alive, I'm telling you, the Crimson Chin is not going to go down easy, and we can still try to make this happen. So... He is going to bring in the big ol' Fairy Hammer, and I know that there's a few things I need to do to try to finish off this late game sweep. So, uh, I can go for an Endure here. He's going to have to hit me with a physical attack. That is going to then activate my weak armor, 
And unfortunately, he doesn't have anything super effective on me, so I'm not going to be able to get my weakness policy. But I'm thinking, with just a speed boost to be able to outspeed everything on his team, it's looking like old Crimson can make shit happen here. So, this is the plan. I'm actually going to Terrastalize just to try to get some boosted damage on Expanding Force at some point. I just go for the Terrastalize because it's my last mon, and I decide, like, fuck it, I'm going full Crystal on the ass. Except he is actually going to Terrastalize as well. So... As you're going to see here, this thing is going to turn into a ground type, and this is where it's unfortunate that I'm going to go ahead and Terra into pure Psychic. Because if I don't, this thing hits me with a Terra Blast ground type, and then that's going to be super effective activating my weakness policy. But, my dumbass decides to go full Psychic. I thought I was just going to be fun trying to get a little extra boost on my Psychic moves here. I could have waited another turn to do this, uh, which would have been helpful. But, I go full Psychic on him, and now we are just going Crystal on Crystal. So... I go for the Endure just to ensure that I can get this speed boost. So, I brace myself here. He does go for the Terror Blast. That is going to be ground type. I am just pure Psychic, so it's neutral. And it is actually not even going to be able to knock me out. Tinkerton does not have the greatest attack. I think it's like base 70. But without that, uh, without Gigaton Hammer, it's not going to be able to do much. So, I get that weak armor, which is going to boost my speed. But what's good about this is now I'm faster, guaranteed. And I should be able to uh, finish this thing off with a nice little expanding force. I actually, I actually click armor cannon, it's fine. I just shoot my armor at him instead. He's actually end up gonna switch into the Claude Sire. Uh, so Marvin here, unfortunately, does not have quite enough health to be able to take it. Um, I would like to get another speed boost on this thing, but as it sits now, it's looking like I am actually uh, faster than everything, regardless, as it stands. So, uh, I get the defense drops, it doesn't really matter. I'm not planning on taking another attack. Anyway, I go right for the expanding force, of course, in the... Uh, the psychic terrain that is going to, you know, absolutely obliterate this this piece of, I don't know, poop over here. So, <laughs> down goes the Claude Sire, amazing Pokemon, and again, one of my favorite Gen 9s. And now he has two Pokemon left. He has the Kilowattril, and he has the Tinkerton. And it's looking like I could potentially make this shit happen. It might require a little bit of extra stuff going on, but let's see what happens. So he goes into the Kilowattril, and I'm thinking, okay, he's probably going to set up the Tailwind here. And I don't really have... I, I'm, I'm expecting Tailwind, but if he decides to attack here, I basically lose there. So, I have to go for the safest option. So, he goes for the Tailwind, but I still have a plan. I know I can take care of this thing. The Tailwind is going to be there for the remainder of the match. And at plus one, it's looking like Tinkerton behind Tailwind will actually outspeed me. But, I do still have weak armor, and if I can get that to activate one more time, um, I should be able to make stuff happen. So, down goes the Watchroll. He's down to our last Pokemon here. We got a little 1v1. This dude has the fucking earth on his head, and here's where he has to hit me to knock me out, right? So I decide, I'm like, okay, I'm going for the Endure. That's going to activate my my weak armor once more. I'll then be at plus two speed, should be able to outspeed this thing and then kill it. He knows I'm going to do that, unfortunately. He goes for the Swords Dance, which is quite unfortunate. He predicted that, read me like a book, and now there's still a chance. I can go for an Endure again. It's basically like getting a double protect. I go for the Endure... And it fails. If that endure there did not fail, I believe it works like Protect, where you can get it twice in a row. Uh, it's just a roll. So, had I been able to activate my, uh, my ability with the weak armor once more, I would have been able to outspeed and then knock that thing out. So, super interesting match. From the start, it didn't look like I was going to be able to bring it back. Uh, but he is going to come out on top there, so that was a super good match. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always go your way, but I love a match that when it comes down, down to the end there, super fun. So, Thank you guys again. Make sure to leave a like on the video and I'll see you later. Peace out.